The Naked Scientist's Question of the Week, brought to you in association with the How to Wisman Foundation, supporting science and education from Alpha to Omega. Hello, I'm Hannah Critchlow and welcome to Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. This week we tackled the burning issue of spontaneous human combustion, since Donald wrote in with this. A weird occurrence was reported in Soweto, which took place about two weeks ago, where a young man of about 20 years suddenly started burning. He was nowhere near a fire, heater, stove or anything of that sort, but he literally caught fire, and he is now in hospital for secondary burns. This got me thinking, there's been quite a few cases of people spontaneously combusting. Is there any scientific explanation for this? So, is it possible for humans to spontaneously burst into flames? And if so, how? Well, bacteria in the human gut naturally produce phosphane gas, methane and hydrogen. Phosphane gas, also known as PH3, so phosphate attached to three hydrogens, could feasibly spontaneously convert to diphosphane, P2H4. If this happens, it could ignite the methane and hydrogen fuels in the gut and send an explosion igniting in our abdomen, providing high temperatures for the burning of the fat on our skin and the clothes on our back. Surely then, this could make spontaneous human combustion a possibility. Over to Dr John Emsley, chemist and author. He's contributed his considerable spark to the scientific feasibility of such combustion in nature. Spontaneous combustion is seen as a possible explanation for will-o'-the-wisp, those flickering lights that can be seen over marshes at night when something appears to ignite methane as it bubbles to the surface. So the explosive combination of phosphane gas, diphosphane, methane and hydrogen are emitted by the marsh bacteria that live there eating the decomposing material. These mix causing spontaneous combustion and a scientific explanation for the marsh folklore of small goblin-like fairies mischievously leading travellers off the beaten path at night using lights that look to be shelter. So, back to microbes living in the human gut. Could phosphane gas mix with the hydrogen there to form diphosphane and thereby ignite the methane? If so, surely this could explain any reported cases of spontaneous human combustion. Back to John. But it seems highly unlikely. Why is that? Well, because getting two phosphorus atoms to bond together in diphosphorine requires a lot of energy and there didn't see much point in microbes producing this. So, due to energy requirements, spontaneous human combustion seems improbable. But, just to be sure, has diphosphane ever been found lurking in our guts? Diphosphane has never been detected in human intestinal gas. Spontaneous human combustion, at least via this chemical pathway, looks to be out of the question, though. Thanks, John Emsley, for setting us straight. We next turn our attention to this. Hi, I'm Neil Briscoe from Gloucester. I find that I can't work with music playing as all my attention is on the music and it distracts me. On the other hand, I have friends who can't work unless they have music at loud volume blasting through their skulls via their headphones. Why does this difference exist? Music, a concentration aid or a complete distraction. Why do some people find it helpful and others? disruptive. What do you think? You can post on a Naked Scientist Facebook page. You can tweet at Naked Scientists. You can email studio at thenakedscientists.com or you can join in the debate on our forum, which is at nakedscientists.com slash forum. The Naked Scientist's Question of the Week, brought to you in association with the How to Wisman Foundation, supporting science and education from Alpha to Omega.